Welcome back, Captains, to Starfleet Academy Online. I'm your host and instructor, Hale Bosey, and in today's episode, we're going to be going over Admiralty. Admiralty is probably something I'd, I'd like you to get very familiar with because it's something that you should be doing on literally a daily basis. Uh, Admiralty, once you get up to a level that you can enjoy it, and I believe that's level 52 if I'm not mistaken, but I could be mistaken. If I am, uh, you know, make sure you comment in the section below and let me know. But, um, but I believe it's level 52, and when you get to this level, you should be able to unlock... Um, the Admiralty system and where you find it on you is just below your mini map the three heads if you want right in the middle if you click that then you can open up and there's a tab up top that says Admiralty now you need to know about this because there's a few different things that it's going to do number one for each of the missions that you do it gives you a good amount of experience on your experience bar here and, and it'll help you get to 65 faster and in addition to that once you've hit 65 it'll help you gather your specialization points so that you can continue to progress in those specialization trees it's a really fast way to do it I cannot tell you uh, or express to you how quickly you can make that happen just with doing Admiralty at the very end of my progression in a couple of my tunes all I did was Admiralty and it took me all the way through and gave me enough specialization points hitting level 10 on each of these factions uh, that I was able to get to not only level 65 but most of my specialization points done for the specializations I wanted on those characters so that's that's pretty cool for Admiralty but finally uh, heading the Admiralty system altogether you're gonna notice that here's your in-progress log here's the assignments that you've done in the past lately one of my strategies has been to gather dilithium with this and this is gonna be one of those ways that will absolutely be worth its weight in gold for as far as time um, for you to spend time doing these missions just to gather resources you can get a lot from doing Admiralty missions and you can only do roughly eight at a time if you just look up and down, there are a bunch of open slots, and then you have the assignment log. This just tells you the assignments you've recently completed or most recently completed, and the ones you're actually looking for in a lot of these is actually your tour of duty, and there's a few different reasons for that. There are four campaigns that you can see here on the left, and in each of those campaigns, they offer a little something different. Like, I've noticed that the Federation tends to offer a lot more experience, and, and so if you want to pump up that those specialization points, you know, targeting this area might might be a good thing. Then when it comes to Klingon, uh, you'll notice that it has a lot of EC, Dilithium, and and, uh, and other little goodies like research and development, which is great. Uh, same thing with the Romulans, a lot of um, a lot of Dilithium, and uh, the Ferengi, definitely a lot more Dilithium, but also a lot of research and development stuff as well. So if you're taking a look at these, the reason that you're looking for the tour of duty, like I was showing you before in my assignment log, if you look down, it says in this case, the Ferengi Alliance Tour of Duty 6 of 10. The reason you want to target these is because every time you do a series of 10, at the end of each of these campaigns, if you look up in the right hand corner here, uh, where it says Tour of Duty 1 of 10, Tour of Duty 6 of 10, when you click on this, you'll notice that it actually gives you as much as 30,000 Dilithium or every single time you finish that 10 series. And so it does take a while to get that, but that is definitely worth its weight in gold. It's one of the most sought after resources in games. So definitely pick that up as much as you can, because that is going to help quite a bit. You can also look at how much experience you have right here on the experience bar. So you know about where you are and how many more experience points it's going to take you. Campaign experience, by the way, that, uh, that it's going to take you to level that up. So that's a way that you can have that. And you should also know that when you do Admiralty missions, there is a limit in each of these categories as far as how much uh, experience you can gather from each of these so also keep that in mind but you're gonna be limited to whatever ships you happen whatever Admiralty cards you have in your ship roster and so these Admiral be car Admiralty cards can be gathered a number of ways either through mostly just picking up your own ships and um, you know going and progressing through game and every time you get a ship you're gonna get an Admiralty Admiralty card related to that ship in addition to that some of them come off of missions some of them come from like um, 
boxes, some of uh, like like Phoenix boxes or, or, or something like that. So these are all things that you're going to want to keep in mind to gather as many of those uh, materials as possible. And if you notice, there are two different types of ships. Number one, there's these small craft right here, which are really important because small craft sometimes don't trigger bonuses. And if the difference between them is that these small craft usually enhance something, some aspect about the larger craft, but only the larger craft. So uh, if you take a look, their rarity spans from common all the way to epic, as you can see. And each of these are the different areas of, of expertise that it would lend to any particular mission. So let's say I'm going to do a mission here and I'm planning for it. If you look here, it tells you what that mission requires. It's either 90 engineering, 40 tactical, and 40 um, and 40 science so if you go ahead and click the plan button because that may be something that you wanted to do because I want 30,000 energy credits okay so you'll notice something though it's not the 90 that it said it was at the very beginning why is it 165 well you see this little lightning bolt here that's an indicator that there's a some sort of event that's causing that to go much higher than it normally would and if you look down under the events, you can see what those things are. So that gives a plus 75 engineering rating required in order to get past this mission because in this case, there's a warp core breach imminent. And so you need that engineering expertise to shut it down. And so that's kind of the way that this works. And so what you do here is you can select up to three ships that's in your ship roster of Admiralty cards that you have. And you're like, all right, well, I need something that's heavy engineering. So I'm going to choose something like that. But ah, there's a bonus. Not only is this high in engineering, if you look at the bottom of the ship, they all have different modifiers. And this modifier in particular is going to be extremely useful because this dreadnought, when I assign it, boom, it ignores anything from engineering, any critical events or anything like that. It makes it null and void right there. So it automatically lowered it the 75 engineering points that it just boosted it up. So that's a great start. And I'm already more than halfway towards my goal. I'm already hitting my goal for tactical. So really, I just want to focus a little more on engineering, right? So I keep going. I find something that's heavy in engineering but low cost. So I'm like, all right, that looks good. Boom, and I'm already hitting every, all of my targets, right? But here's the thing. When you're trying to do these, especially when you're gathering resources, you want to be really frugal and strategic about the way you use your ships. And a lot of times, if you look at, at the success rate over here, just above where you normally put your ships, yes, you could complete the mission without putting a third ship in. And yes, it is 100% guaranteed based on this success chance bar to be successful and it doesn't have to be 100% to be successful that's a tip that a lot of people didn't know about if you want to be really frugal with your ships but uh, there is the chance the off chance that um, that it's not so I like to make sure that not only are my uh, missions going to be successful but also that they have the highest chance possible to crit and what I mean by that is if you crit and here's my crit chance down here 28% if you crit it means that you can actually not only increase the amount of um, of stuff that you get, but the experience, the rewards, and sometimes if you look down here at the bottom, it'll actually carry event rewards and that can be magnified as well. And that can be a significant amount. So you want it to crit as much as possible because especially when it crits, a lot of times you're also getting something called pass tokens, which we haven't discussed yet, but I will in a moment. And so that's one way to gather those pass tokens. But Okay, I don't need a ship, but do I want to increase my critical strike or critical uh, chance rate? Absolutely, yes, I do. Uh, I definitely do. And so I'm looking for something that's going to do an augment. And one, the one thing that the small ships are really good at is they have these really cool modifiers, like this five times critical rating to all stats. Watch what happens. Boom. Automatically, even though it didn't offer a lot of in terms of like... Uh, engineering tactical or science it does increase the crit rating times five to all of the different stats including the critical rating stat that it was giving me that plus 100 so now i have a plus 300 critical rating uh, and i'm adding that 160 to it just with that one ship so that's that's pretty spectacular and i now have almost a 50 percent chance of critting that's pretty spectacular and that's what i'm going to do last thing that you're going to want to keep note of though is that you notice that there's this little wrench with a number indicated next to it that is the amount of time that once this 
mission is complete, those ships will need to spend in the maintenance in order to be ready to use again. So if I use this, then it's going to be another 18 hours plus whatever time duration of this mission is, which is listed here, an hour and 30 minutes. So a total of 19 hours and 30 minutes before I can use that ship again. So that is something that you need to be aware of. But one cool tip for that is that you'll notice that there's actually 25% uh, maintenance per any ship that's not a small craft. And if I did that, boom, uh, I lower my critical tra uh, chance uh, uh, ability, but I am uh, gaining like hours uh, on on these ships, each of them, because 25%, so like 50%, because these are our big ships, right? Uh, I'm getting 50% reduction in repair time. So now this is only going to take nine hours and this is only going to take six hours before I can use it again. Do you see how that can be useful? So planning these is like really important. So remember, target your tour of duties. Remember when you're targeting this stuff, you want to look at the results, but more even as important as the results, you want to look at these event rewards. Now, I told you that there are pass tokens, right? And I was going to explain those. In a nutshell, what that means is that uh, you can pass up a mission. Like, let's say, eh, this is great, but I don't really need any of this. You can use this pass button right here. It will use up a pass token, but it'll take the next on-deck assignment and put it in that slot so that you can try to get something maybe that I want. And I do want to target more of my dilithium, so that might be a good one for me. But it's not giving me a lot of event rewards. But if you look through, sometimes you'll find some pretty cool stuff, like 50,000 uh, EC there. You know, just some R&D stuff there. Sometimes you'll find stuff like this where it's like 500 dilithium ore uh, as a bonus to the reward. And that doesn't even include the rewards that you have up here. But I think this should give you kind of an idea overall about why this is so important, how it can be used to gather resources. Each person's probably going to have their own individual strategy about how they achieve their goals. Maximum level is 10 here. So, you, you know, you don't really get more experience or anything beyond this point it's just about more resources and so once again the tour of duties klingon and the ferengi give dilithium the romulans will actually give universal tech upgrades that don't require dilithium which is cool and then the federation gives specialization points two full levels of specialization points uh per uh per uh, tour of duty set so that's that's pretty spectacular well, I think that about covers it mostly for our Admiralty today. At least that should get you started. If you have questions or if there's anything you think that's important that we missed, please comment in the section below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Once again, I want to thank you for joining us today in Starfleet Academy Online. And of course, as always, boldly go. Legends never die when the world is calling you. Can you hear them screaming out your name? Legends never die They become a part of you